spectacular day for baseball at Guaranteed Rate Field as Dylan Cease makes his first start at home in 2020. Last time against the Indians was not as good as his start after that against Kansas City. So we'll see what Dylan can do in that second time facing Cleveland this year. Jason Benetti, Steve Stone along with you. And look, Steve, you said it yesterday about Dylan Cease. First pitch strikes, key, right? He can get ahead. If he can spot his fastball, he's going to be in good shape. And this is a battle for second place. So we want to see the good Dylan Cease, the guy that used mostly the upper quadrant, but the guy that threw a lot of first pitch strikes. And as you can see, he used everything that he had. So he was very good. That's the kind of potential he has, and hopefully he can live up to that tonight. Because if he can, Sox can win the first game of what should be just a delightful series. There are some of these games in the Cleveland series where you could see it writ large on the marquee for years with these pitchers and the names of the young pitchers. Savali versus Cease. Aaron Savali is very good. There is no doubt the Indians are the premier pitching club in all of baseball right now. They've done everything right. And last time we saw Aaron Savali, he was brilliant. Nine strikeouts, only one walk. He fielded his position. He got everything over the plate. That curveball was just outstanding. This is a group of young Cleveland pitchers. They're all talented. They all throw strikes. And you'd have to say that they're on the right track. If they get any offense at all, they're really going to be dangerous this year. Sox are hoping to hold them down. Will it happen? We'll find out. The headline people don't think so. Home runs galore. Will we have them? Find out along with us at the same time. The Sox had only made three errors all year coming into last night, but unfortunately last night things didn't go very well. Leary couldn't handle a sinking liner. That wasn't that damaging, but this one was. Unfortunately inside the park home run and then the high throw to first, Abreu doesn't jump and it hits off the glove. So this has been a great defensive year for the Sox. Last night wasn't one of those that will happen. They got to tighten it up against Cleveland because the Indians pitchers don't give you a whole lot and odds are you're going to have to win a very close game and to do that you're going to have to pick up the baseball. Yeah the Indians in that four game series against Cincinnati gave up five runs. I mean they're they're really good they're really talented and their guys understand moving the ball around they're not overwhelming pitchers as far as velocity is concerned, but they can all pitch. So Sandy Alomar is going to be the manager tonight. Remember, remember Sandy? Obviously, you remember him here in Chicago. He's been the longtime first base coach. He's had a few opportunities to uh, interview for a manager. Sandy Alomar can be a major league manager, but along with Terry Francona and Brad Mills, these guys are very good in the coaching department. There's no doubt right now that Alomar has got the team. You take a look at our Insure on the Spot starting lineup. Get your free auto insurance quote in just two minutes at insureonthespot.com. All those switch hitters at the top four of them. There's another one in the eight spot. Sandy Leone down to nine and the Shields back from a COVID-19 positive. And so Dylan C facing this lineup. We are off and running from guaranteed rate field. And protecting the zero is important in this game, as we said, because of that Cleveland starting staff. You don't know how many you're going to get, especially with the Sox without a couple of cogs in the lineup tonight. Nomar Mazzara and Yasmani Grandal, along with Edwin Encarnacion, are not starting today. Dylan Cease, his third start. The first one, not so good. The second one, excellent. Second chance at Cleveland. First time through with the Indians, two and a third. Francisco Lindor gave him a home run. And for Roman, that's what he's going to do. Four seamer mostly. Two balls, two strikes on Cesar Hernandez. You know, the interesting thing about these switch hitters is you look at their career totals. They're not exactly easy to pitch against late in games because you have a couple of guys who are better against right handers a couple of guys who are better against left handers. So there's not uniformity in one side or the other that you prefer to face them at that gives Sandy Alomar Terry Francona that whole uh, group options late in games. And also you really don't have to pinch hit because they always have the advantage of facing them from the other side. 
But this is a very versatile lineup. We are going to get very specific location, I think, from plate umpire Jordan Baker. He yelled, ball that's in, 3-2. He's also not going to be fooled by the high pitch because he's the tallest umpire in the world. Steve's measured all the umpire's heights. There is ball four upstairs. Cesar Hernandez walks. Time now for the defense brought to you by UI Hill. It's Aloy, Luis, and Adam in the outfield with Yuan, Liuri, Danny, and Jose in the infield. James McCann's got the plate. Dylan sees on the hill. Nomar Mazzara probably still nursing that sore foot. They're not overly concerned, but he's taking a night off. Probably can pinch hit if need be. All right, so how do you remedy early spotty fastball command? Well, unusually, he's missing inside. Pitchers are either arm side strong, glove side strong. Normally, Dylan Cease, arm side strong is good. That's a way to left handers into right handers. Tonight, he's missing inside. Jack Swain got a strike on the change up there. Nice change. Nice change and a, a good benefit of the call. I don't think that Dylan was happy with the location of that one, but he got the strike. Change up off two and one on Jose Ramirez. I want to ask you, when you saw a second time the same team early in a season, how did you change what you threw? And I know you were predominantly curveball, but, but how did you change what you did? You have to go through exactly what happened to you last time and figure out what went wrong. Center field, Robert is underneath for round number one. So what I mean is, look, Cleveland handled them pretty well. So he goes back, he looks at the video. He dissects each and every at bat. He dissects what he did with each and every hitter. The hitters that beat him, the hitters he beat, and figure out why that happened. It was very simple the last time. If you look at that, you'll realize that he wasn't throwing strike one. He was getting behind on most of their hitters, and they took advantage of it. He hasn't been able to throw quite the location he wants to yet. So Cleveland doesn't have to adjust because they hit him pretty well. Dylan's going to have to adjust. There's a breaking ball strike. And yeah, that's a good sign, getting that over the plate, because if nothing else, not only is it strike one, but also put something into the hitter's mind that he's going to throw whatever he wants to on the first pitch. He's not going to just sit back and throw fastballs and say, here, hit it. And the dirt McCann in front of it, one ball, one strike. That's a good block, because any time a ball lands in front of home plate it goes the opposite way watch it it's a curveball and it moves back to the left side of McCann he did angle his body you see the angle of the body which means that he's bringing his elbows in you don't want it to get between your body and your elbow and when it hits it bounds out front it, it strikes me that you're using your body almost like a rail in pool in billiards. Yes, that's pretty much what you need to do. And, and McCann is talking with Baker. That was a strike. He's got to get high strikes. He's got to convince Jordan Baker that he's going to live upstairs and he has to call that pitch a strike. Went downstairs for a changeup swing and a miss. Two and two. I think that one surprised Lindor, who's a pretty good hitter, but he was swinging at the motion, not the ball. He thought he saw a low fastball. He really aired out the swing, and the ball wasn't there yet. Very deceptive. That was a good pitch, the best Dylan's thrown tonight. Dylan only threw 12 changeups in his first start against Cleveland, and they only swung and missed twice. As that's to first, Jose spins it to second. Return pass, double play, good first inning. Leadoff walk, no harm done. Cease gets a ground ball on the Sox. He'll swing it with Robert Moncada. And Abreu, when we come back, but Jose is so very good at starting this double play. He gets the boomerang, and that'll do it. Then Jimenez McCann. Danny Mendick into the seventh spot after a three hit night a couple of nights ago. Collins and Angle. 
There's a look at Aaron Savali, 25 years old, on for his third start. 18 strikeouts in 12 innings. That's miraculous. Left-handers not doing much with him at 208. He's going to face Luis Robert first. And there's ball one. And now for Roman. We're going to keep track of that pitch all year long. The cutter, the four-seamer, the curveball. He's got them all. Throws him a lot. There's a slider. Yeah, he's got he's got really nice stuff. He's always around the plate. That one identified as a strike and then just disappeared. It's like every Cleveland pitcher throws the same slider. They have a pretty good idea about developing pitchers, and we'll talk about that as we move along. They are, however, without their hitting coach tonight. Yeah, Ty Van Berkleo has opted out. So Terry Francona not with the team, dealing with a health issue. Sandy Alomar Jr. has taken over as the manager. Mike Sarbaugh has shifted from the third base coach spot to help on the bench. As Robert takes upstairs. That was a slow curveball. Savali had a wonderful curveball when he faced us in Cleveland. Hopefully it won't be more of the same. Three and two. On the ground foul third base side Luis Robert despite that big strikeout game yesterday over four four strikeouts has a hit in 11 of his 13 games. He is one of 15 players in baseball to have a hit in 11 games this year. He's battling this at bat and you're going to see games from him like last night. You're going to see some awkward swings. You're going to see that at times he looks overmatched. However, he will very quickly come back and have good ball games. This is going to be a fastball away. Let's see if he can get it. Didn't need to. Ball four. Five walks last six games for Robert now. Here's our UI Health defensive setup, and this is how Sandy Alomar is going to put him out there with Mercado de Shields and Zimmer in the outfield. Ramirez, Lindor, Hernandez, and Santana in a very familiar infield. Sandy Leone's got the plate. Aaron Savali on the hill. For some reason, as great a center fielder as Mercado is, and he's been brilliant against us, they decided to put the Shields in center and Mercado in left. With this group out there, though, this turns into a pretty good defensive outfield on the whole. They have three center fielders, basically. There's no doubt Zimmer is very good. I think Mercado is excellent. The Shields can go get him. He came over from Texas. Go to first, and Robert back in. Uh, Luis Robert has been the guy for stolen bases for the Sox this year. See what he's thinking here in the first. Sandy Leone is pretty good. Yeah, he is. He's not quite as good as Roberto Perez, but he's pretty good. I like this. I like Savali falling behind because because his fastball isn't overwhelming. If he falls behind, that turns into runs. He didn't fall behind in Cleveland at all. This strikes me as one of those you've got to get him now situations, yeah. though. First inning, first inning blues. Many starting pitchers have it. Way inside, 3 0. If he doesn't get Moncada, I think Carl Willis comes out to have a talk with him because the game can get out of hand early, especially with the Thunder in the middle of this lineup for the Sox. Willis in his second go round as a pitching coach with the Indians. If he feeds him a fastball, is this a home run? Oh, it's a high strike. One can only hope that. Dylan Cease gets the same pitch. This is really borderline, just kind of over the top. Well received by Leon, by the way. He made it appear lower than it really was. Called strike two. Neither was in our strike zone in Toyota pitch cast. I think Jordan Baker has got a pretty good plate. It's a pretty good pitcher's plate, but the hitters have to be aware because if the 17 inches turns into 21 inches, two on either side. You have to go get him. 
Robert runs, ripped to right field. Yohan sides it up well. Robert's going to get to third at least, and he runs into a stop sign at third base. The way he was breaking for second off contact, thought there was a chance he might score. Nick Capra holds him up to play for the big inning. And nobody out, you're not going to gamble this early. And so he's off to the races. This is a fastball that drifts out over the plate, and Yohan, who's been on base now every game this year, continues his hot hitting. This is a promising way to start, and a good stop sign by Nick Capra. Robert reads it all the way, and what he's going to learn to do is not that. He actually slowed down by looking behind him. What he's going to learn to do is hit the bag. He knows it's a base hit. As soon as he's getting close to second, he's going to look at Nick Capra. No need to look him back because that loses you a step. That's what the coach is there for. Yep. Pick him up, trust him. First pitch, outside ball one, a fastball to Jose Abreu. Would be so big, not only to just score against Cleveland in the first place with their pitching, but also to stake Dylan Cease to an early lead for confidence purposes. At the worst, Jose wants a fly ball. With Savali falling behind just about each and every hitter, this is really good hitting time for the Sox. It's dinner time right now. I mean, <laughs> two and oh, two runners on already. Jose loaded up and fouled a cutter away. Time now to take a look at our stats with Lowe's tonight as we see two White Sox on the top five of hard hit balls this year. And they're the two on the way up to the plate right now of Rayu and Eloy Jimenez. Hit the ball hard, good things happen. And the dirt, three balls and a strike. Well, that's a really good block by Leon. They've got good catching. Perez is outstanding, and Leon, coming over here for the first year, does a great job here. Hits the glove, bounces off the chest protector, no advancement. Sandy Leon was always a good pitch blocker and a pretty good thrower. He's gotten better as a receiver as well, based on what you hear from pitchers. So. It's a it's a well stocked defensive catching cabinet for Cleveland in the air right field Zimmer toward the line and he's going to run out of room three and two. So Savali's gone 19 pitches already still nobody out as you see the August numbers for Jose Abreu hopefully he feels like August. Only thing he has to protect against is going out of the strike zone. In run producing situations, he has a tendency to want to take everything on himself. And this year's team, he doesn't have to do that. On the ground is shortstop Lindor Hernandez and double play. The Sox do get a run, but Savali makes the swap for two outs. That's what the Indians were looking for. But the Sox take the lead. Robert scores 1 0. The Sox certainly will take that and have the early advantage, but Cleveland is willing to trade that as well. So one in, two out. Eloy Jimenez coming up. Game number seven for Luis Robert in the one spot in the order. He has six runs scored since he's done that. So if you're talking about a table setter and a guy that you want on base, he's done the job. Lindor off a short hop throws out Jimenez, but the Sox get a run and lead one nothing in the first game of this series for second place. Well, Nick Markake as he had opted out, he decided to opt back in and he hits a walk-off home run. Welcome back to the Braves. Shohei Otani. Back in the batter's box, at least from an elbow injury as well, with a home run. He is good for baseball. 
And the Marlins have the 282nd win for Don Mattingly. And 283 looks like it's on the way. It's 4-1 Marlins, bottom three in New York against the Mets. Well, you have to give them a lot of credit. The Marlins, under trying circumstances, have put together enough guys to not only play baseball, but to play winning baseball. I hope the Marlins win the National League. It would be great. I mean, if they get in the playoffs, it would be great. It would be one of those things that we talked about in the ramp up to this season about how unusual things are going to happen because of these extraordinary situations. Be good for baseball if the Marlins made it. Yeah, I, I mean, look, it's great fun to have that Cinderella story, but especially, I mean, this is not just basic sports adversity. This is serious yeah. public health stuff going on, and to be able to compile, I mean, Somebody tweeted out their transaction list over the past week. I mean, it's it's like a scroll worth of stuff. But to have the ability to bounce back from that and play good baseball and, and maybe do something really nice for a city would be great. Yeah, then they take out the Dodgers, they take out the Braves, and then we see a really interesting postseason from the National League. The check swing that was called a ball, and it's 3-1 and one on Santana, who's willing to be very choosy at the plate. The appeal to Jerry Meals, he's at third. Jeremy Rehack at second. Shane Livensparger is at first base with the king size Jordan Baker behind the plate. Was that appeal a meal? That's exactly what it was. Remember deal a meal? I do. That was a wonderful, that was a Richard Simmons diet plan. It was just terrific. I thought the idea was great, and for the two weeks it was in action, it, I think a lot of people lost a lot of weight. How about that from Carlos Santana? 80 or more walks each of the last nine years. That almost got thorny. I'm going to segue away. <laughs> we bring you behind the curtain of the segways on this telecast. Three and two is up and in, and there's another walk for Santana. It's of the leadoff variety, and one on for Fran Mil Reyes. Well, Dylan Cease has walked the first hitter in both innings. That's not a good way to keep it together. However, with Fran Mil, you get a ground ball. It's a double play. We got Jerry Meals, we got Fran Meal. And Deal Emil, you got that in already. <laughs> I, I promise I don't get residuals. <laughs> <laughs> well, on, nobody out for Reyes, who. Carlos Carrasco evidently was trying to pump up a little bit the other day. Reyes had really fallen in a slump early in this year. And Carrasco went up to him, according to. Uh, a story in the athletic went up to him and basically said you're going to go up there and hit a homer and Reyes said to him can I get a single first and that's how things were going for Fran Mio Reyes and he went and he hit a home run he's really strong that's a big man he looks like a 70 home run guy just in, in build well, he can swing it I mean San Diego knew that but there was no DH at the time in the National League about that Padres don't have runners on base when he's up evidently they didn't but this year they're they're pretty good yeah they are have I told you I like the uniforms that they have you did you said that they were classics you say that like you don't believe it no like I, you don't I, like them. I think they're terrific I'd like to see Mark Grant in one one of my favorite broadcasters by the way is Mark Grant I bet you Mark Grant would wear a uniform for you he's very willing to uh, to do things like that Mud, by the way, uh, played a wonderful uh, Woody from Cheers in our sportscaster scenes we did on the web. We did a full reading of a Cheers episode, and Mud was was Woody Harrelson. He is good. the analyst of the Padres. One more breaking ball down and away, and Reyes is out. Let's see if he can get it there. 2-2 two, two coming. It's a fastball outside. It's three balls and two strikes. So both pitchers having to use a bunch of pitches in their first couple of times out. There is the slider and just put it in the spot. Hit that over. Runners off. Check swing grounder to the vacated spot and it's a base hit for Fran Mil Reyes. So Santana was running with the pitch on three and two and Reyes has a hit. He didn't mean to swing. I mean that was a wonderfully defensive swing and it turned into goal. This is a perfect spot for the slider. 
And he wanted to check it up. And guides it through the vacated right side. This is just a really good piece of hitting. So something Sandy Alomar is doing that Terry Francona doesn't do a whole lot of is early running and then hitting. Putting runs at the corners. And the outcome for the Sox, they'll take exactly what happened with Cleveland in that Sox first inning. Bradley Zimmer, that clipped him. So it's a hit by pitch, and the bases are loaded for Cleveland in the second. Just barely off the elbow. You can see it there. A sterling attempt to get out of the way. If you're padded up like he is, you might as well have no sense of urgency as Don Cooper comes out. Everybody does it. I'm not, yeah. I'm not saying anything about Zimmer. Everybody does that. Didn't do it before the padding came, though. That, <laughs> that, that could end your season. That was a game changer. Yeah. So wh what's your message if you're Don Cooper here? He's telling him in not so many words, don't worry about the bases loaded. Start getting hitters out, throw strike one, get ahead of these guys. Dylan has such good stuff that early in the game, he doesn't have the feel for the breaking ball. He tries to throw everything as hard as he can. And although that can be fashionable at times, if you don't have pinpoint command, you're going to fall behind. You're going to walk some people. Two walks and a hit batter, a single for Reyes on a slow ground ball through the right-hand side, and now Oscar Mercado, young outfielder for Cleveland. Takes a first-pitch slider for a strike. I like what McCann did. He knew it was going to be a slider, but he didn't set up early. He stayed right in the middle of the plate. He wants to give... A struggling Dylan Cease. A big body to throw at. Found away 0-2, and, and, and a strikeout here would be the perfect scenario because you have Sandy Leone next, who's a double play candidate, certainly. Going with a high fastball here up and out of the zone is pretty good. If Mercado does make some contact, it would be a pop-up. Better yet, he could swing through it. So we'll have to see what James has in mind. One, two. He struck him out. Fastball away, one gone. James wanted a high fastball. Dylan got it. Semi-high, but out away. Good pitch. Threw it right by him. There's the big first out. Now you got a guy that doesn't run at all, and if he hits a ground ball, you're out of the inning. Sandy Leone with the bases loaded, one gone. away first base side and for a guy who hit 35 percent of his batted balls last year as ground balls to bounce into no double plays is pretty surprising astonishing let's see if we can break that streak right here sounds like a plan to me uh, I think Sox fans are in for it if James goes to the breaking ball He's really good at blocking low pitches. You really have to concentrate in situations like this. That was in the dirt. He did go two strikes. That was a real good block by James. He saved a run and two guys in a scoring position. Take another look at it. He calls the hook. It comes back to him, and that's what we talk about. When the ball hits, it's going to go back the other way. He's able to get the chest protector there and make sure there's no advancement all the way around. Another high fastball looks really good. Pop-up or strikeout. 
Owen oh 2 for Leon. Inside on the slider. One and two from Cease. And the air and foul. So 36 pitches from Cease after the Sox used Foster, Hamilton, Fry, Ciszek, and Lale last night behind Gio Gonzalez. Runner at third, Carlos Santana. Ron Mio Reyes at second. Bradley Zimmer at first. Sandy Leon with a ground ball to third. Moncada at the back. Glove stops and scores a double play. Five to three on the twin killing, and that is it for Cleveland. Nicely done by Yo Yo. Still nothing for Cleveland. Not grounding into it last year. All year. He does that. Out of the inning, nice play by Moncada. And a great way to get out with the bases loaded, nobody out, and Dylan Cease works his way out of it. Strikeout double play, got the job done. That'll do it. Moncada on the bench, James McCann, the batter. First pitch, uh, strike. James, the all star from last year. Uh, by the way, best wish, uh, wishes to a, a big Sox fan named Noah Beltron, who is a 10 and under pitcher for the Lockport Vipers, who has had sort of a rough go of it in baseball recently. He had his two front teeth knocked out and lost two other teeth in a game last week. And so to Noah, big Sox fan, we wish you a very speedy recovery. Hope to see you back on the mound real soon. Then a good dentist will cure it. <laughs> Heartfelt felt condolences from Steve Stone. Where, no, in the, where in the world is Jack Ruby when we need I, him? I, I, I knew it was just going to be a plug for your dentist. <laughs> so that's, yeah. One ball and two strikes on James McCann. And there's a ball upstairs. Two and two. That's a tough hit, by the way. You're not kidding. Who's 14th? Keep on playing. So to Noah, here's hoping everything goes better soon. Two and two on McCann from Savali. Tipped into the glove, strike three, first strikeout for Aaron Savali. Your 2020 Chicago White Sox presented by Guaranteed Rate, your trusted teammate throughout the mortgage process. Experience the difference today at rate.com. Uh, one other note from last night's game for a Sox fan, uh, Ed Christopher, 29 years season ticket holder from Berwyn, receives Leury Garcia's home run ball from last night. That's pretty nice. Yeah. The home run ball is going to some season ticket holders. Hope we're able to give another Theory Garcia home run ball to somebody. The way he's swinging it, and he's swinging it really well. You can't get careless with a fastball to him. Inside one and one. Ed, here's the ball you're going to get. That's it. One ball and two strikes on Leury Garcia. That last curveball was the one we saw when we faced Savali in Cleveland. That was a dandy. He busted no, him with a no. fastball that was off the plate. Yeah, it was. That ball was coming back, but when it crossed the plate, it wasn't a strike. And you saw what Leon did. I mean, he really took it back substantially. Watch the glove. He was already moving the glove as the ball was coming yeah. into it. Yeah, I mean, it was it was a good sleight of hand from Sandy Leon. Two down, ball one on a cutter. 
Danny Mendick, who had a career high three hits a couple of days ago against the Brewers. Getting some more playing time with the injury to Nick Madrigal. Strike two, one and two for Danny Mendick. The command of the curveball that Savali didn't have in the first inning, he's got this inning. That's why that first inning, with an opportunity to put a few more on the board, slipped away. That's out, says Jordan Baker. Two and two. I like this, though. I like knowing whether it's a ball or a strike verbally. Especially with lack of crowd noise, you can hear every call. On the count sometimes. Now three and two. Danny usually doesn't overswing. That's the kind of guy that might make good contact against Savali. Oh, really? Yeah, like that. Good curveball out over the plate, and Danny stayed right with it. He didn't try to pull it, didn't go the other way, just took it exactly where it was pitched, which was right down the middle. It goes right back up the middle. Keeps the inning alive and forces Savali to throw some more pitches, which is what you'd like. You don't mind getting into the Cleveland pen. It's not a bad pen, but it's not as good as their rotation, which has been magnificent. You know what I'm going to I'm going to suggest something right here and see if the truck can whip it up with their technological abilities over the next seven innings and I know they're cringing right now but when you make a prediction like that we need to have like a little like a little picture of your head come out of the corner of the screen with a crystal ball <laughs> and like you just around the crystal ball just pop out of the corner of the screen. Yeah. I don't know. That's, uh, you know, that's... It's what? It's so difficult to do technologically. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm an IT guy, really. Okay. Yeah, that's, that would be problematic. When did you add the T to that? <laughs> oh, geez. Ouch. Oh, that's horrible. Can't do it. No. Not acceptable. One and one. Swinging at a miss. That's a good curve. Yeah, that's a good one. He's got a dandy. He really does. We're going to see three good ones. We got Plesak tomorrow and Bieber for the finale of the series. Doesn't get any easier against the Indians. Good over the top hook. Zach just missed a home run, which would have tied up the ball game last night. It was a 5 2 game at the time as that goes grounding to Santana. And he makes the play after a juggle for out number three. Tony the Swami strikes again, one nothing. Banking mobile banking and digital home financing. You get 40,000 plus free ATMs nationwide and they're the only bank with fun rewards. Rediscover neighborhood banking at emarquette.com slash 75. Great to see all your faces here at the ballpark, even if you can't be here. Saw the kids, saw some St. Patrick's Day photos, some cutouts of friends for life made at the ballpark and we uh, we thank you for joining us wherever you might be and we hope you've gotten to see your cardboard cutout. I get to work with mine for all 60 games. I, you know, I'll tell you something. <laughs> I, I am aghast that you would resort to elder abuse this early in the game. I was talking about Joe Groove, our oh, stage well, manager. In that case, never mind. And do everything guy. Uh, one and two on Delano DeShields who tested positive for COVID-19 before getting on the plane to join the Cleveland Indians so he was late to the party certainly in terms of uh, summer camp but he's back now he's only had a couple of at bats but he like Yoan Moncada and you see his sister in the WNBA for this guy a tremendous player in the ACC uh, like Yoan Moncada his major symptom was simply that he lost his sense of, of smell and taste well, he's also, not this time, but he's going to try to bunt tonight. That's something he usually does at least once a game. He's good to keep off base. He is, like his dad before him, pretty fast. Found away right side, still three and two. 
Uh, on Fangraphs today, Jay Jaffe, whose uh, Cooperstown casebook is a tremendous foray into the Hall of Fame, if you haven't read it, uh, Jay Jaffe did a piece about starting pitcher length this year, and he crunched some numbers. The average starting pitcher entering today is going 4.73 innings per start. There's ball four. Don't tell that to the Indians. That, that's what I'm saying. They're, they're a major outlier. There's, there are two stories that come from that. One, the Indians are not playing like that. They're getting much more length. Number two, that's a major drop-off. It's an 8.5% drop-off even from last year. You think that ends up staying after a weird year like this? I think that really is the nature of the game these days. And by the way, that's the third leadoff hitter walked by Dylan Cease, and you can't survive very long doing that. He's been able to get away with it twice because of double plays. But now you're going back to the top of the order. And you got some run producers coming up. You've walked the leadoff man with speed. Way upstairs, ball one. One of those three walks. So you think you think starting pitcher length might might stay there? Maybe a little bit more, but it used to be if you could go six, that's good. Now into the sixth, and they come and get you. I mean, look, they're not paying off on complete games. Complete games are, are going away. You might see them on occasion, but that's about it. But going to the bullpen more and more, and, you know, they're probably going to like the 26-man roster, and this year they got 28. Mm -hmm. And 28 is going to stay. So I see fewer and fewer of those complete games. One and one is in for a strike. One and two for Cesar Hernandez. And another good changeup from Dylan C. Biggest trouble tonight is the inability once again to spot the fastball. But the other stuff has been in the zone. I think it's a high fastball here. Let's see if he can spot it up there. Runner goes. Throw down to second by McCann. Is on target. Got him. Well, what McCann was pointing out at Cease was, thanks for giving me a chance. He really speeded up his delivery. The throw is there. And bear in mind something. If you are a young catcher, there's no outs on the third base side of second. You throw it on the first base side of second, and guys will run into the tag. And that's a really good pitch. Just maybe missed down. Nice play by McCann. Nice speeded up delivery home by Cease. You see James a little disappointed he didn't get strike three there. Second base, diving stop mending, and he aced him. Nicely done, Danny at second for out number two, getting the jersey dirty. That's a great addition to this ball club. Danny Mendick with injuries to the infield. He can play just about anywhere. This is just an outstanding effort. Full out dive from his knees, gets it there. And again, Hernandez can run also, and he's got him by plenty. Danny has proven to be a handyman to have around. And when you start to put together a baseball team, guys like Danny Mendick are invaluable. The stars are the stars. Every team has them. It's the other guys that fill up your roster, guys that give you flexibility and versatility that make your team. And Danny Mendick is one of those guys. One ball, one strike on Ramirez. And Danny Mendick, I, I'd say that he wears his 22nd round draft choice on his sleeve, but he actually wears it on his shirt. He's got a new line of clothing that he was promoting on Twitter uh, regarding the 22nd round. So look. I mean, he's, he's absolutely leaning into the turn about the 22nd round stuff. Well, talking with a lot of guys in our front office, what they said was that Danny Mendick has had to prove it at every level of this game. Oh, he knocked him down and struck him out. It is literally a knockdown, drag out affair. Knocked him down. Now they can drag him out. Time to go to the next inning. TKO cease round three ring the bell cast powered by Google Cloud on a caught stealing from James McCann quick if you're under two 
That's really good. As you can see, average major league time, but the pitcher delivering the ball is one of the keys. Because if he's above, if he's 1.3 or above, you have to be down around 1.9 or below. And you saw, if you're below 3.3, you're going to get just about everybody. It was all clean from James McCann. I mean, the whole mechanic there was beautiful. Check swing, no go, two and one. So I have a I have a trivia question for you that I don't think what Irving Berlin. <laughs> I don't think that's not correct, but I also don't think you're going to get it right in three thousand guesses. Well, if you say that, probably not. Fly ball left field. Mercado back at the track, and he is there to make the catch for out number one. So Aaron Sabali on the mound for the Cleveland Indians is the first Indians pitcher to retire the side on three strikeouts in his debut. When he did it last year, his first inning in Major League Baseball, he retired the side on strikeouts in his debut in the first inning. He's the first Indians pitcher to do that in a debut since 1998. Is this pop foul first base side over the shoulder try and Santana's there to make the catch. That's very well done. Outstanding effort by Santana who started out as a third baseman. Moved behind the plate and now doing a great job at first. Okay, so the last Indians pitcher to strike out the side in his first inning in his debut, July 31st, 1998. Can you name the pitcher? Sam McDowell. Good try. 1998. Not six. Gary six. Bell. Good. Uh, also a good try. The answer is Mark Witten. Wow. How about that? He had four home runs in one game. Did he, he did. Do that the day that he uh, struck out the side? No, that was with the Cardinals. <laughs> hard hitting Mark Witten was hard pitching Mark Witten. How about that? To left field on a line. And more facts about Mark Witten after this. And if oh Yohan pulls up a little lame over at first, we'll check on him next. In the field of play, he never went back to the dugout. They brought his glove, and here as he's watching that, he takes a false step on the way to first base. Well, hopefully he's okay. You don't have the hitters to do it, but normally, in an effort to just test and see if he is okay, somebody's going to bunt on him. Mm. But again, these aren't the hitters. You would invite Lindor or Santana or Reyes. Any of the three, you would invite them to bunt the ball. Well, Fran Reyes bunt single, and they're going to make Pluto a planet again. 
They're few and far between, certainly. Oh. Oh. I mean, he's making some good <laughs> pitches down and not getting any calls. <laughs> wow. Hey, uh, today's the anniversary of Steve McMichael getting a run from the other ballpark in our city, so... Is it really? Yeah, why not? Why not you? Yeah, that's a <laughs> little inconsistency down with the zone. Yeah, it's... It's been a, a little bit bouncy plate tonight. One ball, one strike. It's outside two and one. Left-handed with Lindor. You want him to beat you the other way, to center field or to left center. He loves to pull the ball left-handed especially. And he's got easy power. Up the middle, Garcia, who's played a really nice shortstop in for Tim Anderson, gets over there on a backhand side, one gone. Well, the Erie's had some adventures in the infield, but he hasn't had any at shortstop. I mean... These are pretty good plays, and he's making them consistently. He's got a very strong arm, so he can take a little extra time. And Lindor does go back up the middle, but the defense is perfect for him. And a nice job of pitching by Dylan Cease. He wouldn't allow Lindor to pull the ball in that situation. And for Dylan, a little calm comes over him because this is the first time the leadoff man hasn't been aboard. Oh, yeah, beautifully done with a changeup. Great motion on this one. Can wants it down. With the change especially, if you are going to miss it all, you want to miss down. Like that. Here, here's what I want to say about that strike call and, and your reaction to the strike call. Your love for baseball has been nonstop throughout your life. No, no, no. We, we talk about baseball yep. in the booth before games, and, and you go on radio stations, and you talk to friends, and uh, you never stop thinking about baseball. So when something happens on the field, you, you very much still react like you are a part of the game, and I love that. Like, that's a vitality I love being around. And it wasn't even out of criticism. It was like you were on the mound and you wanted that call. And I think because truly it is a beautiful game, and I think the most beautiful, of course, obviously I am a little biased in that respect, but it's so intricate. The battle between pitcher and hitter on a pitch-to-pitch -pitch basis is magnificent. The thought process that goes into each and every scenario is complex. And the better the guy on the mound is thinking, the better he does. But he's got to realize that that guy with the bat is also thinking. And it's that battle that goes hand in hand. The advantage a pitcher has, quite obviously, he's got seven guys behind him to run down his mistakes. In the air to right field, angle on the charge for round number two. But this is a game where you peel back the layers and it has something for everyone. For the little guy or little girl who's watching, you hit the ball, somebody picks it up, they throw it first, it's really great. You hit it out of the park, everybody cheers, it's, it's that kind of game. But then you get the aficionado, and he looks at things differently. You look at the routes taken to fly balls, you look at how rundowns are executed, you look at how the relay plays are made and what goes into it. And I've talked about it before, but it is a choreographed ballet. When done well, it's beautiful. Occasionally, look, you have ball games like last night. Not so beautiful. But that's going to happen with every team, but especially a team with a lot of young guys like the Sox are. But you can see, if you can look beyond the mistakes of youth, you will see the potential of this team being really good for quite some time. Seems like the command has improved for Dylan Cease, this happening specifically. What we've seen with Reyes is because he's got very long arms, he has good coverage away. So that's why that high fastball inner portion is so good to him. But you're right, the command has gotten better. That's strike three for a one, two, three inning for Dylan Cease. His third strikeout is a buzzsaw fastball. 
And the Sox carry a 1-0 lead, and it's dandy. Against these Cleveland Indians, and here is what Savali threw against him. Bunch of cutters, a lot of fastballs, kitchen sink there, basically, on Savali, but he generally, generally decided to stay away from Jose with breaking stuff for the most part. And this on the left side of the infield will get the job done. So Abreu, who had a double against Savali last time out, opens this game 0 for 2. Sox are making some more contact tonight. That's something they haven't been doing a lot of lately. But they are putting the ball in play. Both pitchers throwing it real well. Second time through the order. Let's see if the Sox can adjust to a very good right hand breaking ball pitcher. First pitch fastball misses ball one. As you heard, Jordan, I don't have to say the count anymore. Jordan Baker is calling out the count for you at home. And there for a strike, a slider called, bottom of the zone, one and one. Uh, we've been told the Blackhawks have scored. So they're leading the Oilers 3-2 to two right now over on the NBC Sports Chicago main channel. We're here on Plus, and we hope you're doing the old two-screen experience tonight. Pull the goalie. <laughs> That's just your hockey strategy for all time? Yep. Savali to first. Slow motion cover. Two down. No, you did not hit your rewind button with pause. Test your luck during every White Sox game this season with the 50-50 raffle. Sox split presented by Wintrust on sale now until the end of the seventh inning. Current jackpot right around $800, which grows throughout the night. We've seen that. Get your split the pot 50-50 tickets at whitesox.com slash Sox split. Valid for Illinois residents 18 and over. James has already had quite a ball game. He made a great stop to save a run, and then he threw out a very speedy Delano De Shields after a leadoff walk, taking him off the base, going to the top of the order. That was a big play in this game. De Shields was also the last base runner for Cleveland in the game. After that, five in a row retired by Cease. He's thinking about bunting right now. You think so? Yeah, I do. Now you've you've made a lot of calls in your life, but to know what a center fielder's thinking, uh, if, if that's true, I might file some paperwork. <laughs> we'll, we'll see what he comes up with next time. Everybody file that away. Let's see. The shield is <laughs> coming up in what four batters. This is foul third base side one and two. Third round draft pick for these Indians is Aaron Savali. A lot of their pitchers look almost identical to one another. They're all around 6'2". They're all around 200 pounds or so, give or take. They all have very good motions. They don't overthrow. And the key, and the Indians try to stress this, and most pitching coaches do this, most organizations do this, the Indians really concentrate on it, is keeping the weight back and not opening up too soon. And there's a few ways to do that. I don't know exactly how the Indians teach that, but I will tell you a couple ways to do it. If you know a young pitcher, if you are a young pitcher, if you've even heard of a young pitcher, you can explain this to them. First to 2-2, two -two, chopped to third. Ramirez on the move forward. And there is out number three, so that's going to have to be a tease. That's a tease. So much left to do in the game. Right. Matt presented by GMC. We are professional grade. There's your question. For today, hashtag Sox math. Uh, number of games left with Cleveland, including tonight, multiplied by Larry Garcia home runs plus Bummer's jersey number minus minor and major league teams Bummer played for the year of his major league debut. <laughs> Clang. He hit the post. Still 3 2 Hawks. That was up there. Uh, good video by Jordan, who uh, made the graphic himself, by the way, which is the, a first. For Sox math winners, we've had some very creative videos so far this year from our winners. He's got a Sox math resume, which we appreciate. 2-0 and, oh, and a swing and a miss on that high fastball, and that was in the zone, Steve. 
upper limits. And look, Dylan Cease is a high fastball pitcher. That's what he's going to be. He will be able to throw low fastballs, but that's not what he likes to do. That's not his natural ability. Gets upstairs. A little too far upstairs. Yeah, that was in the attic. Three balls and a strike on Bradley Zimmer, who was hit by a pitch on well, the first pitch he saw in the second inning. Pulled his knees on a 3 1 changeup. Zimmer's changed his batting style. He's gone back to what he used to do. It's a flatter bat. He used to have a wide open stance. His right foot was almost out of the batter's box. Now he's more squared away, and he figures he gets a better look at the ball. Missed down, ball four. Four leadoff walks in the game. He's been able to navigate his way by it, but he is walking a tightrope. Mercado now. He struck out on three pitches in the second inning. And a pop up first base side. This will get into the seats for strike one. You, there are so many different stories about guys who have had odd call ups to the major leagues. They're in AAA and they're sleeping or they're at a dinner or they're at some event or you can't reach them. Mercado was golfing with AAA Columbus while the Indians were playing in Chicago and there was an injury and Mercado was going to get the call up to come to Chicago and, and play for the first time in the major leagues and he was out on the golf course so he wasn't carrying his phone around with him his phone was either in his golf bag or in the car or somewhere but he didn't have it on him and then finally when he got to his phone the AAA manager said where have you been you need to be in Chicago for a one o'clock game tomorrow. And eventually he ended up making it here for his major league debut. But uh, to all AAA players, when the minors are playing once again, keep your phone on. Indians are very happy to have him. He's got a lot of talent. back just below our booth nothing in two interestingly enough he showed very little power in the minor leagues yet gets to Cleveland hits 15 home runs last year that's his career high at any level started out with the Cardinals Indians are happy to have him around Little bit low, very close. No surprise he didn't swing at that, but he didn't. And Dylan's not getting a whole lot down. With a breaking ball, it's really hard for a catcher to receive it that well, so the glove comes down with the pitch. It makes it appear lower than it probably really was. Another fall of James McCann, just great rotation on that curveball. Here's a little slider. Let's see how effective it is. Inside two and two. So Dylan Cease has thrown 32 fastballs right now. He's thrown 46 non fastballs, relying heavily on the changeup, the slider, and the curveball tonight. Check swing. He did not go, says the first base umpire, Shane Liven Sparger. This one just missing. So here's an interesting call for Sandy Alomar, who's sitting in for Terry Francona. Only question is, with the bottom part of the order coming up, do you run with Zimmer? What do you think? I'm thinking he's going to send him, but we'll see what Alomar has in mind. 
He holds, and that is strike three. Slider once again, strikeout number four for Dylan Cease. That was a dandy. Threaded the needle on the outside corner. 80 pitches, however. It's a lot of pitches right now. This is not unusual for young pitchers with great stuff. Just about every young pitcher with great stuff comes up and he throws a lot of pitches because, one, they'll fall off a lot of pitches. Two, he doesn't have the pinpoint control. Three, he will strike out a lot of guys. And four, they'll walk a lot of guys. So consequently, it's pretty tough to get out of five innings without being in the 90s in pitches. As we said, it's pretty tough to get out of five innings as a major league starter right now anyway. Yep. Sandy Leone had maybe the biggest at bat of the game other than the ground ball that got the Sox their first run. He bounced into a double play with the bases loaded his first time up. It went five to three. Moncada finished it off. And the Indians were done after having three on with nobody out. And what are the odds of a guy who did not hit into a double play all of last year? Not only hitting to one his first time up, but hitting into the second one his second time up. Let's see. Well, if he swings at that one, no, the odds are <laughs> infinitesimal. Where are you pitching him for the double play here? Change up? Well, he'll beat a breaking ball into the ground. So maybe one of those, preferably away. Runner goes and then goes back. Second time Sandy Alomar has elected to go. Zimmer's a tall guy at 6'5. He probably doesn't have the prototypical base stealer speed, but as an outfielder, he does have good speed. Sandy Alomar knows the run game. He knows how to control the run game. Got a stopwatch. Simmer did have 18 steals his rookie year as this ball ends up in left field. Eloy Jimenez is there for round number two. Cindy Alomar is an exceptional catching coach. I mean, you might remember him as a player. He was just a great catcher. He also is a terrific leader. But as evidenced how good he is as an instructor, Roberto Perez didn't have a pass ball all of last year. You go one full season without a pass ball, that's getting it done. I think you fall out of fashion you get some interviews you fall out of fashion and you don't get the interviews for managerial positions but I think that should be rethought in the case of Sandy Alamo two stints here with the Sox there's ball number one and and as a player that is and, and it's silly that this would be true but when you get the chance to fill in for the big league manager just for a couple games for Terry Francona being away for his, his gastrointestinal issue. It, it can put you back on those lists just because people are looking for the hot name. And Zimmer started to take off and scrambles back. We well, thought about a very good pitch to run. That would have been a breaking ball in the dirt. Nicely picked by James McCann, but he didn't throw it. Good effort, and now pretty much it takes a bunt out of the equation. You're up as a hitter, you're up 2 and 0. Oh. In the dirt again, three balls, no strikes. This is the nine hitters, so Cesar Hernandez, the switch hitter, is next. Strikes are important right now for Dylan Cease. That's ball four. Two on, two out. Hit movies, current shows, exclusive originals, timely updates. Watch for free. Upgrade for more. PeacockTV.com. You may recall it was the fifth inning last night that derailed the Sox, who were leading two to one going into the fifth. And then Gio Gonzalez saw the first out and then five straight reach base. 
So Dylan trying to get out of this fifth inning. The bullpen is starting to stir. Nobody throwing quite yet. And James McCann. Goes out to have a word with Dylan Cease. The walks are beginning to be problematic. Heaviest workload this inning in the fifth. And the top of the order. With a pretty good hitter, Hernandez came in hitting 319. Yeah, the top four have been scary for Cleveland so far this year. The five succeeding batters have struggled some. As it's 1 0 on Hernandez. And ball two, so six in a row out of the zone from Dylan Cease. Well, you don't want to face their premier run producer with the bases loaded. Just as soon you end it here and leave Ramirez to lead off the next inning because he's 4 and 11 on the power numbers. And unlike last year when he got off to a slow start, he's gotten off to a good start this year. By the way, congratulations to the Blackhawks who've beaten the Oilers three to two and the series goes to the Hawks three games to one. That's absolutely remarkable. That's a huge upset. Congrats. And the Hawks move on. And the Oilers go home. Although they are home. But they just go to the houses. And stay in the houses yeah. now. They don't go play anymore. Two and one. That's there for a high strike two on a changeup. High change, you can't live up there, but sometimes you surprise the hitter with it. Two on, two out, two balls, two strikes. Dylan Cease gets a ground ball to third. Moncada ranging over, got there, but has no play, no coverage at second base. And the Indians have loaded the bases for Jose Ramirez. Watch it again, little squiver. Onkata is there. He bobbles the ball. Does a nice job of getting to it, but on the transfer, he can't get the handle, so it loads him up, and here comes Don Cooper. Dylan Cease awaits his arrival. Jose Ramirez is by far in the early season the most dangerous hitter in this Indians lineup. If you remember it at all beginning of last year, one of the reasons why the Indians didn't get off to as quick a start as they would have liked was that Ramirez just couldn't hit anything. And then, as we move to the second part of the year, Ramirez started to hit everything. This year, so far, it's been just the opposite. He came out hot, he stayed hot. And there's a lot of run producers on this team, Lindor being one of them. Reyes, when he plays, is another one. But Ramirez leads the way. Inside, nice block by McCann. Ball one, saved the lead right there. Once again, a terrific job by James McCann. That was a real difficult ball to handle. A breaking ball buried inside. You gotta really trust your catcher to throw this with the bases loaded. Two and zero. Oh. This could be the most dangerous pitch of the ball game right now. Well, Brewer with the bases loaded at 310 with a couple of slams. You'd have to figure that Ramirez. He is just looking fastball. If he gets anything else, he's probably not swinging. He took it for a strike, two and one, up to 99. And yeah, that was that was inside, though. I mean, that was that was right on his hands. If you do swing at that, it's a ground ball to the right side. If you make contact. Two and two, change up. Well, that one baffled Ramirez because he had seen a fastball in the exact same spot and could not pull the trigger on that one.
2-2 from Dylan Cease. Second base, Danny Mendick. Invasive maneuver from Dylan Cease. We got a little bit of a fist pump, and the inning is over. Sox keep the lead. On the fifth seed at all. That clinches the playoff spot in the 2020 Stanley Cup playoffs. Download the My Teams app for highlights from the game and find out what's next for our Hawks. Boy, the immediacy of these promos is something to behold. Just wrote it moments ago. <laughs> they just took them down. Almost instantaneous. Congrats. I mean, that's that's yeah. a really big effort. I guess, and I, I'm the one that, that did it first. I guess that we should tell people spoilers are coming in the age of the DVR. No. I've been told now by both our producer and director that they had DVR the game and multiple people on Twitter. So there's a fly ball right field. Way back there to the track and the wall, and it's caught by Zimmer. Leori Garcia with a lengthy fly ball and nearly got it up and out for the second straight night. As we get you caught up, presented by Honda City on what's happened so far in this ball game. The Sox had the first two runners on, and Jose Abreu with a ground ball. Double play ground ball doesn't get you an RBI, but it does get you the lead. Luis Roberts scored, and Dylan Cease has held it up. Five innings, four strikeouts, just two hits, five walks. It's really been a high wire act for Dylan Cease, but he's been able to make the big pitches when he's had to. And I would think that would probably be it. We'll have to see what happens, but his control wasn't where he wanted it, but he showed you he's got ice water in his veins because when he had to make big pitches, he did just that, and he's... Taking a ball club that scored 13 yesterday and shut him out through five. And it's a team that saw him already once this year. He made the adjustment. Made some just exceptional pitches. Outside two balls, two strikes on Danny Mendick, who singled on two and two his first time up. Aaron Savali out of the Loomis Chafee School in Connecticut throws strike three. A couple of Northeast guys. And Savali wins it two down. High fastball hits the zone. It backed up. It was close enough. So here's what I was talking about, about staying closed. If you're a young pitcher or you're talking to a young pitcher, you want to stay closed. If you're a right-hander, that's keeping the left side in. Two ways to do it. With your left shoulder, try to touch your chin when you come back to deliver the ball. You can't do it, but the thought process will keep your front side closed. Or think about showing the hitter your number. I'm not talking about turning around like Louis Tiant or Johnny Cueto, but try to show him your number. Again, you can't do it or you won't do it, but it keeps you closed. And the reason you stay closed is if you open up, your arm can't catch up. You throw high and away to left-handers, high and into right-handers, and you have no command whatsoever. A pitcher with good control always stays closed. If you lose it, you have to go back and get your mechanics, or you're not long for the game. You see Savali stays closed, does not open up. He's got very good control. The Indians pitchers are pretty much to a man like that. It's almost four different clones in Clevenger. Clevenger came over from the Angels. He's got overwhelming stuff. But the guys that the Indians drafted and developed, they all throw to spots consistently. They establish their fastballs. Zach gives it a ride center field. Delano DeShields is there on the move. For round number three, well-pitched game. Fantastic. One-nothing Sox after five. We'll have your intro video tomorrow, and look who's here. How often do you see it? Okay. The star of Sox man comes into the ball game in the sixth. Aaron Bummer on for the seventh time. He's won a game. His ERA, a little above one and a half, but 12 strikeouts and five and two-thirds. This, a big inning. Lindor, Santana, and Reyes. Anybody gets on Zimmer, so the heart of the order. Ricky Renteria decides to go with his best left-handed option early in this one. 
which means you know he's got a plan for the next time those guys come up. They're, they're going to come up one more time. And Bummer, you would imagine, because he hasn't thrown for a couple days now since the second game of the Milwaukee series when he went one inning. That was on Tuesday. You would imagine he's pretty fresh at this point. Yeah, I figure he probably is in there to go two, assuming the first inning is not too eventful. Five innings for Dylan Cease. Nary a run on a couple of hits. Walk five and fan four. Center field. Robert back on it. Still going. Luis slows and makes a catch real simply like. I mean, he basically just sucked the glove out and said, all right, land here. This park is playing really unusual because we're in the 70 degree range. And this park, which is a very lively ballpark, has seen a lot of balls just die at the track. If it does stay in the park, odds are overwhelming, that guy is going to get it. He just coasts under it, easy play, runs to the spot. But we're not seeing the life on the ball as we usually see. Doesn't mean you can't hit it out, it just means that those so called cheap home runs that you see here a lot, when it is warm, you're not seeing now. I'm going to guess the answer is no on this, and I'm just saying this as a, a wild idea to throw it out. I just I wonder if there's anything to people not being in the ballpark that changes the aerodynamics at all. I would imagine the answer is no, and I'm not seeing any research on that, but we'll have a full season of 60 at least to figure it out, the hope is. So, I don't know. I wouldn't imagine so. But to really judge it, Jason, wait till the game is in the upper 80s. Yeah, no I mean, right. When it gets to the upper 80s and it's not carrying that well, then you got something there. Over Garcia into left center. And that's a base hit. White Sox baseball is back, and so is the Chicago Sports Depot. The official team store will be open tomorrow, August 8th, from 10 to 2 at limited capacity. Get the newest Sox gear to rep all season long. And for more information, go to whitesox.com slash depot or follow at White Sox store on Instagram. Yeah, again, I, I bring it up just because we're going to have all these different variables this year of the game that we've never had before, and so people are going to investigate everything, and that is one of the variables. I know the, the home winning percentage is much lower this year than your typical start to a season. Now, clearly, when you don't have the adrenaline of home fans, there's a reason the home field advantage exists, but there has been some research done into that, and it's like the lowest winning percentage early in a year for home teams in history. Which you'd imagine might be the case, but you wouldn't exactly expect it. Well, let's get a, di a different sample size and see what happens, but there is something to that. Look, you tend to disregard any noise on the road because that's part of being a professional baseball player and a major league baseball player, but you can feed off the energy at home. That's probably why it's a little easier to win at home. 3 and 0 on Aaron Bummer to Frontmill Reyes. You got Santana at first and two balls in play so far. the big burly Reyes and that's a strike taken at 94. I'll come back with a good sinker do what guys do against Aaron Bummer and that is hit the top of the baseball. See if he can get out of this. Well there's a sinker. Let's see if he can execute. That's a double play ball they're going to have to turn the field around three and two. This is called heavy sink. It comes in, drops about three or four inches, and you just barely hit the top of the baseball. Look at how late that dropped. Yeah, it's 10 to 9. Unbelievable. Three and two. That is downstairs. Ball four. He lost Reyes. Two on for the Indians. Sixth time the Indians have drawn a walk. 
It's close. It is down. That was a good call by Jordan Baker. So it's going to be Bradley Zimmer's spot, but it's not going to be Bradley Zimmer in that spot. So Jordan Luplo, who has been very good against left-handed pitching, will hit with two on and one out. Luplo always hits left-handers. He particularly hits the Sox hard. How about this? Both managers are using some big guns here in the sixth inning of a one nothing game. Ricky Renteria calls on Bummer and probably the best suited right handed bat to face a left handed pitcher comes in in this moment for Cleveland in the sixth. Luplo nothing for 18 so far this year. Hang on Loopy. Loopy hang on. Hopefully there's a ground ball forthcoming. A little bit low, 2 and 0. Farron doesn't get the low pitch, that's a problem and Jordan Baker being a very tall umpire is not giving the low pitch especially the bummer. We saw some changeups also borderline. They didn't go Cease's way. Two and one. So Luplo in his five home runs against the Sox in his career. Standing in uh, no more than two against anybody else. They're really pinching up the middle in the infield. Guess why? Mendick Garcia turn it got him. They're really pinching up the middle on the infield. Dot dot dot. <laughs> Double play and out of the inning got the ground ball he needed and it's still one zip. Yes it is. The warning track on a smarter more secure home Wi-Fi network. If it's connected it's protected. Are a lot of people running into their walls. They are in their homes. I think so. Yeah. They're setting up their router and they just crash into the wall. It happens sometimes. Five five with a warning track. Back to the mound, Savali. Oh, low throw. Safe. A grenade to first. Wow. He is so accurate. He's walked one guy all night long. We've seen that twice this year. You might remember Sparky. Glenn Sparkman from Kansas City did essentially the same thing. When you try to lollipop the ball, you open the door for this, a lawn dart. And Angle beats the play. That is a huge insurance run. Yeah, if you're going to take that many steps, you might as well either run it over there or toss it underhand. So the Sox have good speed on. They flip over the lineup card. So much good there for the Sox in a one nothing ball game. One ball, one strike. This is an interesting turn of events for Savali. He is a young pitcher. If he is thinking at all about the problem he created for himself, he might get careless to Luis Robert. Let's see how he works him and if he can put that out of his mind. Found a corner there. Well, his fastball has terrific movement, and when he throws it away, he starts it off the corner. It comes back and shaves off the corner. One, two. Up the middle into center field, base hit. Oh, Angle's going to test it, and he is into third. Adam was churning all the way, and he beats the throw from DeShields. The book has always been on DeShields that he can get to the ball quickly, but he doesn't have a real good arm. So there's your mistake. The high fastball out over the plate. Luis takes it right back up the middle, and Adam Angle is off to the races. 
book is you're going to run under Shields every chance you get. And even though he has all the best of it, charging and throwing in the same motion, it's not the best throw. It's accurate. He just doesn't have a great arm. It's on the money. But the speed of angle gets him over. Yoan Moncada, first pitch swinging, ground ball foul. I mean, we talked about off the top of the show how important defense has been to the Sox, typically. They had a wobbly night last night. Now Cleveland, in a 1-0 score, has an error to lead off the six, and we'll see if the Sox can pay it off. These are big runs right here. Sox have nursed that one to nothing lead since the first inning. A little cushion not only helps you on the scoreboard, but it also helps Ricky Renteria manage the bullpen as well. It gives you more options. Mercado's got the best arm in the outfield, and he's right now in left field. Strike three. It's a curveball. One away. <laughs> This is normally where Jose Abreu shines. He's a prolific run producer. He did ground into that double play in the first inning. But now, although the game isn't on the line, the Sox win. Winning one to nothing, this is a really big at bat for him. And certainly for Savali. Jose Abreu, 30 doubles, 20 home runs in his first six years in the major leagues and he nearly got clipped there he's one of three guys to do that in his first six years Jose's having a good old time after nearly getting popped the other two are uh, Albert Pujols and Joe DiMaggio that's pretty good company Ball one strike on Jose. Tight again, two and one. It'll be interesting to see if Savali goes to a breaking ball. See how much he trusts Sandy Leone. We'll look in at Sandy. He looks to the dugout to see if there's any help on pitch calling. Looks like an inside fastball. On the ground to second base. Hernandez and Lindor and another double play and the innings over. Sox couldn't pay it off. Still one nothing lead though after six. Three six three. Then Moncada with a five three double play. Same result. And then with the bases loaded, right? Danny Mendick. They put it away. A lot of good plays in a one nothing game so far. And when you keep turning two, good things happen. Combined five double plays for both teams tonight. And Aaron Bummer is indeed on for his second inning as Mercado has strike one. Look like he followed that straight off his body without hitting the ground. It's impressive. Not easy to do. Now physically impossible, basically. Not anything you want to do, but something that's difficult to do. Watch this. Nope, hit him on a bounce. Both times. Well, he won a free game, though. I mean, he hit <laughs> both flippers. <laughs> he did that. A one to shortstop. Leori Garcia gobbles it up and throws in one motion for round number one. He really has been good at shortstop. I was, I was just thinking the same thing. He's coasting to the ball. He's putting it away. He's making pinpoint throws. And Leori, who came up as a shortstop, is showing why he did that. This is a hard hit ball. 
moving easily. That's not an easy hop. He stays right with it, keeps it in front of his body, absorbs the baseball, and makes the play. Moncada at third. Another bouncing ball. Sinker ball theater, two gone. Well, what Aaron Bummer is, is Dallas Keuchel if he had seven more miles an hour on his fastball. Because both of them throw sinkers. Dallas throws a great changeup, but both of them entice the right hand hitters to hit the ball to the left side. Aaron looks bad tonight. He was looking up with that sort of indifferent glare as if to say, I got to get one more even. Left hander on the mound. What you do have to look out for is a push bunt to the right side. Well, he was thinking about bunt out there in center field. Well, he took strike one there, and now he's in a hole, and they haven't pitched to him. They're worried about the shields tonight. Takes downstairs, one ball, one strike. I mean, you look at the vertical movement of that sinker. It is an upper echelon sinker in Major League Baseball for Aaron Bummer. He misses sweet spots on bats. And there you see, he's been something of a long man for Ricky Renteria and Don Cooper. And good for him. He got his contract in the offseason as well. I mean, you talk about a guy who's come back from arm trouble, A ball to the majors in the same season. And as humble as you can get in a clubhouse, a great teammate, Aaron Bummer. Missed there at 3 and 1. Well, that's one of the things the White Sox have been willing to do, and that's take guys who they view as building blocks and sign them to long-term deals when they don't have to. Good deal for Aaron, certainly a good deal for the ball club. If he stays healthy, he's one of the biggest weapons in that pen. Three and one, that's ball four. So DeShields from the nine spot has walked three times tonight. Delino Trout. He's not that fearsome a hitter, but three walks. Now his speed is aboard. And Evan Marshall throwing in the pan. Did you say that because it's Mike Trout's birthday? Nope. Didn't know that. Happy birthday, Mike Trout. Well, but he hits home runs for everything, celebrating everything else, so might as well hit one today. Bastille Day. <laughs> birthday. Home runs. Pick a holiday. He did homer today, by the way. Yeah. Didn't know that. Also didn't know that it's the fifth time in seven years he's homered on his birthday. Wow. Yep. Oh, there's your butt. He thought about it. He thought about keeping it alive for Ramirez, which is always a good plan. And with a left-hander on the mound, almost without exception, they fall off to the third base side. So for a right-hand hitter who can push bunt, it's normally a good play. That's a strike, one and two. Remember when Aaron first came up, the control was erratic. He was put in some yep. situations that he just wasn't as stable for as he is now. He looks like a totally different guy demeanor-wise on the mound as he gets a slow bouncer foul to third. There are some managers in a situation where their leadoff hitter is in a hole. You don't want to lead off the next inning with Ramirez. They will run with the line of the shields if nothing else you get thrown out at least you start with Hernandez next inning and you bail out the hitter Let's see if Sandy Alomar is one of those guys one and two he does not go and it's a tapper back toward the mound bummer scamper is over and a one hopper is juggled and safe well we've seen a lot of pitchers unable to throw the ball to first base and this really opens the door that's a very easy play I think he said you're kidding me. Yeah. Well, we're not. And right here, he's got some time. He doesn't take that big step. Watch it again. Instead of taking what is called a little crow hop to first base, he cannot get it there. Jose Abreu can't handle it. It skips off the grass. 
and the inning stays alive for once again their most dangerous hitter. And you got Savali sitting on the bench, still the pitcher of record for Cleveland. In a one-nothing score, and Don Cooper comes out of the dugout to talk before Ramirez, who's come up now in two major spots in this game. Ramirez in the fifth had bases loaded, two out, and Cease got a ground ball out that was Cease's final batter of the ball game. And now Ramirez with two on, two out in the seventh. Don Cooper went out there to get Aaron Bummer to forget about the throw he just made and worry about the one guy that can hurt him and that's Ramirez. Well timed trip to the mound by Don Cooper. Two on two out. First pitch strike one bottom of the zone. It's a big first strike from Aaron Bummer. Seven walks and a hit batter tonight for Cleveland's offense and now. A conversation at the mound and the trainer is going to come out. Oh, this isn't this isn't real good at all. I'm only hoping that he got a cramp, but I, I got to believe they're going to take him out to take a look at it. That is not a good sign for nope. Aaron Bummer in the Sox. So the new pitcher will have as many warm ups as he needs, but Bummer is coming off the field. Watch the pitch. <laughs> yeah, sometimes what happens is. You tweak something from the elbow and it's a nerve situation in your hand. We'll have to see what happens with Aaron Bummer, but boy, this has been a year where there's been a lot of injuries. A lot of injuries to all pitchers. Not only just the Sox. And right there is just a terrible sign for a guy that means so much to this bullpen. Well, it's going to be Evan Marshall coming in. And you hope this injury is the least invasive to the season of Aaron Bummer. He's been such a revelation out of the Sox bullpen. Marshall will warm up and we will come back after this. I bank it's about time and Evan Marshall will have as many as he wants and apparently that's all he wants he was loosening up in the pen anyway and so he's ready to go he inherits a strike so an 0 and 1 count with two outs here the game for the moment on the bases runners at first and second good speed aboard for the Indians to shields at second Hernandez at first the nine and one hitters for Cleveland tonight and now Ramirez swaps to the left hand side where we've seen pretty substantial power. Oh one. Off the plate one and one. Drilled to right field hooking and foul one and two. One more strike to get for Evan Marshall. Turned him around with a high fastball, two and two. Well, he's got a great straight change he hasn't used yet, and it might be a nice time to break it out.
Two on, two out, seventh inning. Two balls, two strikes. Right field on a line, angle on the run, Adams here. Ramirez socked a pair. This one caught, first one foul. One nothing, it stays at stretch time. And compete for Cat. Your predictions count, Stoney. Play quick pick. No purchase necessary. 21 plus to complete. Restrictions apply or compete. See official rules and enter at MLB.com slash quick pit. pick. Key phrase, no purchase necessary. Correct. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's right there. That's how you live your life. <laughs> Eloy Jimenez out to center field. And there is out number one. We thank you all for joining us who just watched Blackhawks post game live. You heard earlier what the score was. You probably watched the game if you're just joining us. But in our ball game, if you weren't here for the first inning, you missed all the scoring because Sox got Luis Robert on with a walk. Yohan Moncada singled, and Jose Abreu bounced into a double play. That scored a run, and that's it. As Aaron Savali and Dylan Cease have thrown blanks since then. Cease five innings of shutout ball. Savali six and a third of one run ball. And the big news right now for the Sox is that Aaron Bummer just went out. He sort of balled his hand into a fist after a pitch, called the training staff out, and Ricky Renteria went out with the training staff, and Bummer left the ball game. Evan Marshall yep. came in. Well, both teams have had a few opportunities to have some big innings, to put a lot of runs on the board. So far, the pitching on both sides has just stifled some pretty good hitters. Cleveland stranded eight in the game. The Sox best chance after the first inning was two on nobody out in the sixth. But Moncada struck out. Abreu bounced into a double play. And here we are in the seventh and one nothing still. Pops the glove. Strike two. One and two. Savali's really commanded the outside corner to the right hand hitters. That's been one of the keys for his performance tonight. There's only been six hits combined in the ball game. One two on the ground over the mound. Lindor can't get there. Neither can Hernandez. A pond skipper from James McCann and a one out single. The My Team Zap will help you rep the South Side. Keep up with the latest stories. Listen to podcasts and stream games from anywhere. Download the My Teams app today. I already have it. Do you have it on your phone? You know. Okay. Yeah. I, That's I've, an excuse. I've, no, 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 no. I, I, I have tried numerous times, but my skills stop just short of actually downloading it on my phone. So normally you could help me, but from 20 feet away, it's difficult to do that. Yeah. Quick tip for those of you in Reno or Vegas right now. If you ask Steve Stone a yes, no question, and the answer starts with, you know, if you can rush to the betting window and keep it still open and get to know, you're going to get some <laughs> real good payoff on that puppy. Well, I'm looking into being able to acquire that. Betting slip or the My <laughs> Teams app. One ball, one strike on Garcia, who's nothing for two. But in the meantime, he hit one awfully deep last time up, leading off the fifth inning. Again, another one of those that just died at the track. This one's not going to make it to the warning track, you don't believe? It is Lindor to make the catch for round number two. We've seen a lot of warning track power this home state. We've seen an unusually cool August. I mean, if you get consecutive days in Chicago in the 70s, that's really unusual. Do you recall any consecutive days from the 70s in Chicago? From the 70s yeah. or in the 70s? No, 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 Fred, that was a very specific I don't question. I don't recall anything from the 70s, except the South Side hit, man. I do remember that that team was not shut out until the first week in September, which is pretty miraculous when you consider pretty easy to get shut out. There's some great, oh. great pitchers, and yet 
Nolan Ryan got the job done. And that was a game where Ralph Gar was our left fielder led off with a triple. He couldn't score. He led off the game with a triple and stayed right there. We didn't score first time all year. That's a prototypical. You know it's over if you don't get a run in the first yep. inning. Especially against Ryan. He was only 56 at that point. Yeah, he was a marvel. He really was, and I think he's he's one of the guys that you would look to to try to figure out how you could mesh the old style with the new style and get longevity. That's a type of at bat you were talking about earlier from Danny Mendick. Because, yeah, with Savali, he's around the plate with everything. He's got great control. So guys who are thinking about hitting the ball out of the ballpark are going to take bigger swings than they probably should be taking. And Danny Mendick does not overswing. So that's his second hit. When he came in hitting 263, he's up around 300 right now. Played a good, solid defense. Sox looking for at least an insurance run. Meeting at the mound. Savali so far has been in control. He really has made the good pitches when he's had to. The meeting's not over, by the way. Carl Willis yeah, Carl coming, out, coming out. Normally he doesn't make the changes, but you never really know. Terry Francona is not here. Sandy Alomar is managing the ball club. But normally when the pitching coach comes out, he's not making a change. He's gone out to make a suggestion or two. But we'll see. Dominic Penn is Leon. Up, yeah, the pen is up and going, but I think Leon really just started to heat it up. So Jordan Baker is out on the mound. I, I think he needs to take Carl Willis and get him off the mound. I mean, Carl just as soon talked to him forever so Leon can continue to warm up, but I think Jordan, you got to get on with this. Yeah, Carl was taping a podcast out there on the mound. Yeah, yeah I think it's time to say, I love the conversation. Let's get back to baseball. Zach Collins in search of that first hit in 2020. What a time for it right now. Two on, two out, seventh inning. And Lindor, Santana, and Reyes coming up for the Indians in the eighth. Strike one. First thing you look at when you look at this situation is you keep your eye on the first baseman, that's Santana, because there are some catchers with a left hand hitter up that love to go behind him and get the trailer on the play. And that's Mendick, but so far Santana has not come to the bag. Hold on. If you stray like that with Yadier Molina, you got a problem. One one. In the air left field side and foul one and two. Good games around the AL Central tonight. Close one here. Kansas City leads Minnesota three to two in the top of the seventh inning. Good performance from Jacob Junis in four and two thirds. Jacob Junis has to worry about Sano because Sano has absolutely obliterated him in the course of their head to head movement. 0 for 2 tonight. Pretty good. One and two for Zach Collins. Called strike three and the inning's over. Go to the eighth. One does it right now. White Sox with a little John Williams flair, by the way. That's going to pump you up. one nothing Sox here in the eighth inning. It sounded like John Williams. It wasn't John Williams, but it had a John Williams feel to it. It was dramatic. It makes you want to get up and go, so to speak. I have that fairly often when working with you. 
Evan Marshall will face Lindor Santana and Reyes in the eighth inning. This could be the big inning left. I know the final three outs are important and different, but these are the big pieces of thunder in the order remaining for Cleveland right now. Well, because he can run and he has good power, this becomes a huge out in a one to nothing ball game. Oh one. There for a strike, nothing in two on Lindor, who's grounded out twice and flied out once. That was to center. This is one of the few breaking balls down that has been called a strike. Really good pitch, great movement, straight over the top. Marshall's stuff has gotten pretty sharp. What do you got here? Something down and out of the zone. Or up and out, same deal. Nothing that could hurt you. The object of that is to show the hitter something that is not a strike but looks inviting. That one was too high and out of the zone. So that's an inside fastball. Let's see if he can throw it in on the hands of Lindor. Lindor got his hands around but not far enough to keep it fair. One of the things that Evan has not gone to tonight is that really good changeup. Look in at James McCann, and guess what? It's a changeup. Let's see. It's downstairs. That kind of swerved closer to the plate than usual for Marshall. I come back with another. We'll see what James McCann wants. There's another. Got him off balance enough. Robert on the move. Eloy is there, and Eloy Jimenez skates in to make the catch for round number one. He backed up the change with a change, and he had Lindor well out in front of it. Good pitch, great execution. Took a good base stealer off base. So now Carlos Santana. And when you have guys like Santana and Reyes who can do it with one swing as well, that extra base runner can yep. really change the game. Whoa. One ball, no strikes. Well, you would imagine it would be Alex Colome for the ninth inning. Everything remaining equal. Last time we saw him, it was the first two games of that Brewers series, the two in Miller Park, and he saved both of them. He got errant with that change, and so now he's behind. 3 and 0. Oh. We going fastball and then we go and swing or well, what? Terry Francona loves to give the green light on 3 and 0. Oh. I don't know about Sandy Alomar but we'll see. It's going to be a breaking ball here. Ah, and a strike. good one. Yep. Yeah, I mean I think that was on the mind of Evan Marshall, certainly James McCann was if he gets a 3 0 green light, you just don't want him to hit a fastball. Well, Evans been a Cleveland Indian. He's played with this team. Yep. He knows the tendencies of the offense, at least in the team atmosphere sort of way. And here is another change. It's down ball four. Pretty clearly, Evan Marshall didn't want Santana to beat him. And it's a one out walk. The eighth walk tonight for Cleveland batters. That'll get your angst up at home as a fan, by the way. Eight walks, no runs. It will indeed. Very interested spectator. Mark Moss looking on. Transplanted Clevelander, lives in Detroit. Big tribe fan. He'd love to see Reyes ground into a double play. I would hate to ruin his night. First pitch, <laughs> a strike, 0 1.
Sox have turned three double plays tonight. Center field base hit. Two on for Cleveland. One out. T-Mobile is your ticket to the game with America's largest 5G network. And Luplo, I think, is being called back. No, he's getting an at-bat. Yeah, that's the interesting thing about the pinch hit early. And that's why when you bring in Bummer that early, you can affect the lineup for later. So Luplo, who is much better against left-handed pitching, will face Evan Marshall. You know, the only thing scares you is he's 0 for the season. 0 for 19. Strike one. Sox had a run three batters into this game. There was a double playground ball from Abreu to score Robert. And that's the only run tonight. Sox have not had two one nothing games in the same homestand in eight seasons. Word on Aaron Bummer is left bicep soreness. As he came out after one and two thirds tonight. To third, that's a foul baseball. It's one and two. There's no way the ball was going to get between Moncada and the bag. He was playing the line, anticipating Luke Lowe's going to pull the ball. And if this was fair, it'd have been a double play. I mean, Yuan's right there. The ball. Clearly on the other side of the line, Jerry Meals is right there, right in position to make this call. You see the ball hooking. And it is clearly foul after the first hop. Two balls, two strikes. Reyes at first, Santana at second. Evan Marshall mulls it over. In the air, lightly hit left hand side. Eloy Jimenez makes the catch and two gone in the eighth. Wow, this game has been played all night long. Right at the edge, right on the margin. Interestingly enough, for a one to nothing game, this game has been really interesting because there's been a lot of things going on. Not the normal one to nothing game at this point. Now, Savali's gone seven. I think it's Freeman. Yep. He's come on to pinch hit. So, interestingly enough, they use Freeman here for Mercado rather than for Luplo who came into this game with a slugging percentage against right-handed pitchers at 302 for his career 567 OPS compared to 994 versus lefties some of the mysteries of this game the only other lefty they have is Bo Taylor so it was really take your pick and there's ball one on Freeman hitting for Mercado.
1 0. To right field. Angles back. He is there. He makes the catch, and the inning's over. Nicely done by Evan Marshall. Cleveland's maroon 10, and it's 1 0. For the little safe drive of the game, or I dot to its friends. Second hit of the night for Danny Mendick. He's been able to figure out Savali, who threw a whale of a ball game, but he departs on the downside of a one nothing score. Nick Whitgren comes on, on for the fifth time. He's given up nothing. Couple of holds, no walks, three strikeouts, and four innings. Sox could use some late magic here and tack on an insurance runner, too. You can see some fastballs. He's 63% fastball on the year, 25% changeup. And this ball's charged up. Deep left center, Adam Engel absolutely crushes the first pitch. And it's 2-0 Sox. Well, I'll tell you what. You said he's going to see some fastballs. Adam heard that, being an aficionado of the broadcast and all. Waited for the first ball fastball and took it way out of here. His second home run, he's driven in four. He's proven to be a very handy man to have around. And that is a gigantic run. The problem was that was a first pitch slider. But he's looking for it anyway. And that's a four home run replay. And it's two to nothing. The roar from the Sox dugout is glorious. And it's a two zip lead. As there's strike one on Luis Robert, but a little wiggle room for Colome in the ninth. Mazzara had a bad foot, getting hit by a pitch. Adam Angle gets his opportunity and making the most of it. One ball, one strike on Robert, who's got another hit tonight. As there is the Sox closer, Alex Colome, who's looking for one of those clean sheet saves. What do you think is the big story tonight? I think it's your ability to call what's coming next. There's a strike. Chris Kamka has texted me a mock-up of the little U.S. Swami <laughs> coming in from the corner of the screen. We'll see if we debut it at some point over the weekend. Well, let's see if we can do it tomorrow. That's as over the weekend as we get. One ball and two strikes. Fouled away, right-hand side. What do you think the big story is? I think the fact there's a couple of big stories. Number one, Dylan Cease really battling tonight. That, that's a huge story because his control wasn't there. They had pressure on him consistently. He got out of jam after jam after jam after jam after jam because there was five innings, lots of jams. It's a lot of jam. And he had good stuff. He's had better command, but he had good stuff. Like he made, made the pitches when he had to. Yeah, he re I mean, he really did. In another big story is Luis Robert. He had scored the only run of the ball game with the leadoff walk, and he has a hit to go with it, coming on the heels of a four-strikeout game. That's a nice comeback. He held a little bit and fired one by him for strike three. One gone. Well, let's talk to the publishers and find out what the big story is presented by Kia. It's, it's, is it anything that Steve said? It's not. It's late offense for the Sox against starters and relievers. You see what they've done against bullpens this year, and that will serve you very well. Seventh inning especially. I mean, this team has been really devastating in the seventh. Took till the eighth tonight to add it at least one run. Well, the eighth is the new seventh. Ball one on Yohan Moncada, who's now reached in all 13 this year that he's played in. As the Sox try to find their way into second place, and again, second place gets you a playoff spot in 2020 in each division. You know, Yohan has hit some late home runs also to add on. Now he's ahead 2-0. and oh. So you go up there, you look fastball, you figure that Whitgren is going to throw you one. Just have to hope it's in a good spot. You count that, right? Dating back to last year? Sure, I count everything. Fly ball center field. 
to Shields back, still going, track in the wall, he goes up, and to Shields puts it away. Oh, you're so close, and uh, so was Yo-Yo. I know, that's disappointing. Nice play by the Shields, that one almost made it out of the ballpark. Not quite. You want hits this ball awfully hard. Shields goes up. If he doesn't get a glove on, it's probably out of the park, but he does, and it wasn't. Got the guy right there waiting for the home run. I mean, what great placement by him, by the way. The guy there to collect the home run balls was literally standing on the spot. Yeah, <laughs> now he wanders to another spot. That's amazing. I mean, you talk about an outfielder reading the flight of the ball. He was just waiting for the ball to land in his hands. Great job by that guy. He's holding Angle's home run ball and then just happened to be in the area, <laughs> figured he'd drop by the next possible home run. Wow. I don't know. I don't know who's got more of the ability to forecast things. You or that guy. He's in a good spot. Unfortunately, now, if Abreu hits it to him, he's going to be in foul territory. Yeah, that guy's wandered into foul <laughs> ground. One and one from Whitgren. Second straight night we've seen uh, Boilermaker on the mound. Uh, Lynn Bloom yesterday, Nick Whitgren boiler up tonight against the Sox. Two and one. Two balls, two strikes. Whitgren, a long look in. Cleveland in the ninth as the eight nine and one hitters coming up. It's scheduled to be Leon DeShields and Hernandez. You might see one more pinch hitter. They have Yu Chang, Domingo Santana on the bench, along with the backup catcher, Bo Taylor, who's a left hander, the only lefty remaining. Interesting decision to go with Freeman for Mercado instead of Freeman for Luplo in the top of the eighth. It, it really is. When you're looking at it, you and I both looked at one another at the time. Luplo is 0 for the season. Doesn't hit right-handers very well and is not near the defender that Mercado is. And instead of using Freeman there, he decided to go the other way. Sometimes you make a move, it works. Sometimes it doesn't. Strike three, and the inning's over. But if you're collecting home run balls, which some of you are, season ticket holders, this may be yours. Long fly ball for Adam Engel. He brings in a run. That guy collects it. And 2-0 to your school. Time now for the Grandview Homes home run of the game. Grandview buys homes as is. You can't do the promo without the home run. There's the home run. A two-run lead, and Colome coming in to try to nail it down. So uh, we showed you that guy collecting home run balls, and we have a name on that guy. But I want to know if you think we should actually give his name or if he should just be that guy. I think he should remain unanimous. And there is Colome, who comes in with nothing on the ERA. First pitch. Is a strike on Sandy Leon. No, he, he works very hard. We'll give his nope. name. Uh, Will Svilar, the authenticator, uh, who is also known as that guy and will remain that guy. But great job by Will, who goes and collects all those home run balls and uh, things to be authenticated. Oh, and two on our, Sandy Leon. By the way, our authenticators here have been just outstanding. 
Well, they're part of the authentic fan promotion as well. There's Will doing some great work. They have never failed to authenticate something that needed authentication. They really do a fantastic job. No, they job. do. Yep. No. Oh, and two. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Colome gets the first one. One gone. Let's take a look at our upcoming schedule presented by Volkswagen. There is the tribe. The game tomorrow at 110. And then it's Tiger time. The Tigers seven times in ten games sandwiched around the Cardinals. We're assuming the Cardinals will be playing at that point. Hopefully they will. We'll be watching along with you at home on Sunday. Yes. With the game on ESPN on Sunday Night Baseball. But yeah, the Cardinals uh, not playing again this weekend against the Cubs. They had another COVID-19 positive test. And we have to hope that they have, as a team, a lot of a lot of negative tests and start back to playing baseball. Because when the game's back up, it gets really tough. Now back one and one. Because their advantage in playing the Cubs is they're going to play them ten times, so they have plenty of room to get that in. But if this happened against a team that they only saw once, wouldn't be very good for them or the other team, as a matter of fact. There's some pretty good numbers right there, largely due to Alex Colome and a little help from his bullpen. 66 and 1. Well, that's a good pitch. That that's absolutely had the plate, but didn't get the call. Top of the zone, little cutter. Two and one from Colome. Right back to him. He's got it by his shoot top and on target to first. Two gone. Subaru White Sox post game live coming next. And angling for a shutout here. Still one out to get. But the Sox right now are a half game out of second place and Cleveland. Twins are still trailing the Royals three to two in the home eighth. Kansas City trying to hang on with three more outs. Sox open play today, three games off in the AL Central. That's a strike. Well, this would be a nice time to end it and see Ramirez tomorrow. He's hit the ball very hard. Nothing to show for it, but you don't want him coming up representing the tying run. He's also stranded five tonight, so you figure just numerically he's going to beat you at some point in one of those spots. There he is, a man that leads this team and runs batted in, leads this team in home runs. Let's worry about him tomorrow. Oh, and two for Cesar Hernandez. Let me get a little something extra on that one, but it was up and well out of the zone. On a ball and two strikes with two down. He struck him out of the Sox shutout Cleveland. Big ball game well pitched well played overall and you shut out a team where you walk them eight times and hit them once. A lot of trouble in this game. Sox pitchers navigated their way through. Great cutter on the last pitch and the Indians in the first of three go down and the Sox leapfrog them into second place. And that's where the Sox will end the night. Colomay does get that clean one, two, three, ninth inning. And I will see you tomorrow.